friends, it's Christy back with you on the Lawn Fawn YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using Flamingo Together, Two Can Do It, You Are Sublime, You Autumn Know, and Scripty Autumn Sentiments. So I stamped those images out on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White Cardstock with Jet Black Ink, and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. I'm going to start with my flamingos and I wanted them to be a really vibrant pink so I chose RV23, RV25, and RV29. I'm going to start with the RV29 and lay in some shadows. I'm going to do the male bird first, putting those down at the back of his head and the back of his neck. A little bit on the top of his wing since his head is kind of leaned back would be casting a shadow there and also under his wing where that would be casting a shadow on the lower part of his body and then I'm going to blend that out with the RV 25 then I'll come in with the RV 23 which is my lightest shade and I'm going to really work over the edge of that RV 25 and try to eliminate those lines there and just break up that color and pull it into this lightest area. Then I'm going to work on my female flamingo and I'm gonna color her exactly the same. I'm just going to flip my shadows. I like to keep my shadows on the backs of my critter's body and the highlight on their faces so you can really make out their features well. So I'm gonna flip the shadows since she's facing in the opposite direction. But other than that, I'm doing the same exact process. And then I will also do a second layer on both of these flamingos off screen, just to save some time in the video. But that really just helps smooth out that blend even further and increases the saturation of your markers. So I'm gonna do that for all of my images off screen today. But for now, I'm going to move on to my flamingo's beaks. And I'm just adding a little black tip detail using N3, N5, and N7. I put the N7 on the underside where it would be most shadowed and worked my way up using the N3 as the highlight. And then I'm going to move on to my hibiscus flower and I wanted that to be purple. So I'm starting at the outside edges using V04, V06, and V09. I'm putting that darkest color on the tips of the petals, blending toward the center with the V06 for the midtone, and then I'll fill in the rest with the V04. And I am going to color several different images off screen of these as well. I just stamped one of each. I used Y15 for the center of the hibiscus, and now I'm moving on to my first leaf cluster. For that, I'm using G21, G24, and G29. Started with the G29 and added that to the left-hand side of those little uh, kind of grasses, and then blended out with the G24, filled in with the G21, the next leaf I'm going to use BG34, BG45, and BG49. And this one I'm going to do this smaller version and then also the little bit larger version of it that is two leaves over since they look identical in, you know, like the tree that they would come from. I wanted them to have the same color palette. So I'm starting with the BG49 down at the bottom, blending up with the BG45, and then using the BG34 for the highlight. The next leaf cluster, I'm gonna go with G14, G16, and G19. So I'm starting at the base with the G19 and also taking that color up the center line that is drawn, then blending out with the G16 and filling in with the G14. 
And once again, because this leaf and the one on the very end look the same, they're just facing different directions, I'm going to color these in the same exact color palette. That way I can put them on different areas of the card and they'll still look like they came from the same plants. They're just kind of bending in different directions to suit the placement on the card. Then I'll work on the vine in the top row between those last two leaves. I'm going to start with YG00 and just color the leaves in solid. And then I'm going to come in with YG05 and add just a touch of color closest to the stem on each of those leaves. And then I wanted to darken that up a bit more, so I went with YG09. And I'm doing an even smaller dot right at the very edge of those leaves where they are connected to the stem. Then I'm going to work on that large leaf down at the bottom. It kind of reminds me of a monstera leaf. I'm using YG21, YG23, and YG25 for that. So I'll have a nice mix of different green shades between all of these different leaves, and then even going into like the aqua blue tones, which I thought complemented those very well, because we have the whole range between these brighter yellow greens into the regular green, and then we have more of a blue green, and then the aqua, so it kind of runs that whole spectrum. And then the final little um, viney, uh, kind of fern-like leaf. I'm going to do BG10, BG11, and BG13. So this one will also be aqua-toned like those larger leaves up above, but they will be a little bit lighter. So I'm just starting on the underside of each individual leaf with the BG13, laying in some shadow, and working my way toward the top of the leaf where the sun would be hitting it the most, using the BG11 and then the BG10 for the highlight. And then I'm going to trim these images out with their coordinating dies. For my background, I'm going to start with a piece of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock, and I'm going to use the Cloudy Stencil and some Kitsch Flamingo Distress Oxide ink. So I'm starting up at the top and using firmer pressure as I leave the stencil, and then getting softer as I go up the panel. So I'll get nice definition right at the edge of the stencil, but then it gets a bit more hazy as it goes up into the rest of the sky or into the next cloud. It gives it a very dreamy look. So I'm going to turn my stencil to get a new cloud formation and continue working my way down the panel. I'll do a third cloud formation here, and I think it's nice to have that pink sky. It's going to almost feel like a sunset or a sunrise, whatever you want it to be. And then at the bottom, I decided I didn't need any more because I'm going to have some water that's going to cover that up. But I did add just a touch of color down below so that final cloud wasn't so stark white. Then I'm going to press some ink onto an acrylic block, add some water to loosen that up a bit so it's flowing, and then I'll tap that all over the background to give it a little more interest by just having a bit of movement there. I'm also going to take some Lawn Fawn Liquid Stardust and I'm going to mix that up off to the side because all that pigment settles down to the bottom of the bottle so you want to give that a good mix and then I'm going to put that on an acrylic block so that I can pick it up and splatter that on the background as well and that's going to give you a really beautiful pearlized shimmer when you tip it into the light. So I'll set this panel aside to dry and then I'm taking a new piece of Bristol and I have trimmed that down with the Stitch Simple Wavy Borders. I'm going to blend on some Salvage Patina Distress Oxide ink starting at the top so that I can really emphasize that stitching detail and working my way all the way down this panel. I want that color to be a bit more concentrated up at the top than at the bottom. And then I wanted to define that top edge a little bit more, so I'm going to bring in some peacock feathers and pull that down from the top stitch detail about maybe halfway down this panel. 
and then I will switch back to my salvage patina and just smooth out the transition area between those two. I also wanted to add some of the liquid stardust to that, so I'm going to squeeze some more onto a block and just do some more splatter detail so this panel matches with the sky. And then I'm going to set this panel aside to dry as well and work on my sentiment. So for that I'm going to use the Magic Messages sentiment set and I'm going to stamp that down on a piece of sticky note cardstock using some jet black ink and I'm going to stamp that down twice to make sure it's nice and bold because I really want this to be nice and black and show up against all of the other elements that I'm going to have going on on the scene. So I stamp that down twice and then I'm going to set that aside and work on the inside of my card. For that I'm using a ballet slippers card base. I'm going to pop that in my Misty and stamp on the inside using plastic flamingo ink and all of the images and the sentiment are from the Flamingo Together stamp set. So I stamped that down a couple of times to make sure it was nice and bold. That word together wasn't quite as dark as the others, so I did stamp that word a third time. And then I'm going to trim out the Hello Sunshine with its matching dye. And then rather using Distress Oxide inks to give it some definition like the rest of my background pieces, I'm going to use Copics instead so that the Distress Oxides don't dull down the black ink that I've already stamped. So I'm using my Copics. I'm using Y11, Y13, and Y15. I'm just starting with the darkest color on the outside edges and going in toward the sentiment. And then I did decide that I needed another shade to kind of transition between the Y11 and the cardstock. So I pulled in the Y quadruple zero. Then I took my ocean piece and die cut that using the ocean wave accents. So I have those little wavy slits that I can slide my flamingos inside later on. I'm going to glue that down to the sky background, being careful not to add any glue behind those little cutouts so that I can still slip them in later on. And then I'm going to add the Hello Sunshine sentiment so it is just dipping down into the water. Then I'll grab my two flamingos and make sure that I have them positioned correctly so that they don't cover up too much of the word sunshine so you're still able to read it. Then I'm going to slip one in on the right hand side and one in on the left and I'm gluing those down with my glue tube once I have them positioned how I want them. Before I decorate this any further, I'm going to glue my focal panel to the front of my card. It is a standard A2 size card, so it's four and a quarter wide by five and a half tall. And then I have also die cut the stitch scalloped rectangle frames out of some more ballet slippers cardstock and added some foam tape to the back of that in just very thin little strips that I've cut down. So I'm going to peel off the release papers and pop that down on the front of my card to just frame this whole little scene in nicely. I've added a small piece of foam tape to the back of all of the rest of the images. Just a small piece. I didn't want to cover the whole thing so that there's room for the leaves to overlap each other if necessary. And I did start out adding a little bit of liquid glue toward the base of the leaf where it would be closest to the frame. But I quickly realized that if I wanted to switch things around, that would make it a bit difficult. It kind of made the background messy. So I decided not to use any liquid glue because that way I can change my mind and move the leaves around. And that foam tape is going to hold them securely in place. So I covered up the glue that I kind of messed up with that first one. But other than that, I'm just going to kind of adjust things and move around this frame and add all of these leaves to make it look like we're kind of peering through the jungle and looking at this scene, um, you know, that's kind of more in the distance. 
I'm also making sure to keep those leaves that I have more than one of separate so they're kind of opposite each other in different corners so that it draws your eye more around this frame. I didn't want any two leaves that looked the same to be right up next to each other. I'm also being careful that I don't put any of the bigger leaves overlapping too much of the flamingos. I want you to still be able to see them clearly. So I'm trying to keep the larger leaves more toward the corners if possible. And sometimes I have to just trim down a little bit of the stem of the leaf. And um, that way I can slip it just a little bit higher up inside that frame. I also try to work with the biggest leaves first since there's only so many places that they can go without covering up too much. And then once I have those situated, I can start adding in some of the smaller leaves to fill in the gaps that are left between the larger ones. And it really is just trial and error, testing things out in different places and seeing how they look before I commit to it and kind of going from there you know everything is easy to pull up since it's just got that small little piece of foam tape and even if it did kind of tear up the cardstock beneath it because I use such a small piece I would most likely be able to cover it with something else so but it kind of took the pressure off so that I could just try things out here and there and not be afraid that you know once I stick them down that's where they have to stay so now moving on to these more vine looking plants and using those to fill in some of the gaps. They are long, but they can be twisted and turned in different ways. So it makes it um, easy to kind of stick them in different places and fill in some of the gaps. Sometimes I might have to just adjust and move things over. But like I said, again, with that small piece of foam tape, it made it really easy to be able to do that. And I can also trim off the ends if that helps to be able to find a place to push them down. And then finally, I have my hibiscus flowers. I stamped out five of those. So I'm going to just add those in here and there. Try to space them fairly far apart so that they make these little pops of purple on the frame that pull your eye around the scene, just like all the different colors of leaves. So to squeeze the last one in, I did just have to adjust one of those leaves once again to make a little bit of a larger space for it. And then I felt like there was a gap in the center of the card that just didn't look right to me. I needed to fill that with something. So I grabbed one of the little baby geese from Swan Soiree, and I'm going to color that to look like a baby flamingo. And I'm coloring that using T3, T1, and T0. And I'm just doing my shadows first with the T3, blending out with the T1, and then I'll use the T0 for the highlight. I did Google baby flamingos and saw that they have a pink beak. So I'll use RV21 for that, and then a little bit of the T5 for the little black end on the beak. Then I'm going to cut that out with its matching dye and I'm going to adhere that looking up at the mama flamingo. And I think that fills in the gap nicely and looks like he was always meant to be there. As a final touch, I'm going to take my sparkle glaze pen and I'm going to use that on some of the larger leaves. Just adding a tiny bit, squeezing that out, and then using the nozzle to spread that around, mainly down the center of the leaves. And then I also put it on the yellow stamen of the hibiscus flowers. So I'm going to work my way around this frame. I didn't bother going in on the smaller leaves because I didn't want to cover them up completely. And I just thought it'd be nice to have a little accent that catches the light here and there. So I'm going to finish with that final hibiscus and then I will pick this card up to the light so you can see how that looks and give you another peek at the inside. 
I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please hit that like button and leave me a comment down below. I love chatting with you guys. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I hope you all have an absolutely amazing day. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.